the Super Nintendo was and is one of the absolute greatest video game consoles of all time. The upgrade from the Nintendo Entertainment System was absolutely astonishing. The system built on what made the NES great and made it greater. The system's game library is loaded down with loads of immense titles of every genre. But today, I want to look specifically at the RPGs on the system. I have received lots of positive feedback on the top 10 RPGs of the Sega Genesis, and I have been asked by multiple people to do one for the Super Nintendo. So that's exactly what we are doing. But first, before we get to the top 10, here are the honorable mentions. Breath of Fire 2. Breath of Fire 2 is a large and gripping role-playing game with a troublesome translation. But ignoring this one criticism, you are in for an absolute treat with this game. Colorful graphics, great character designs, and an incredible character fusion system, BOF 2 is a great entry in a long dead series. Dragon Quest 5. You can't go wrong with Dragon Quest, whether it's one of the Western Dragon Warrior titles for the NES, the modern day ginormous Dragon Quest XI, or one of the previously unreleased SNES Dragon Quest games, you are guaranteed to have a great time in a huge world with a huge quest. But as fun as they are, the games are all very similar in gameplay and scope. This is why DQ5 is only getting an honorable mention. It's fun, but you aren't missing out if you play any other entry in the series. Secret of Mana. An incredibly loved title and one people will definitely be angry is not on the main list. The Secret of Mana is one hell of an ARPG. Charming graphics, quirky characters, and a gigantic quest are the focal points of this sword-swinging action-adventure romp. A lot of the titles in the Mana series are definitely hit or miss, but Secret of Mana is an absolute legend. Just don't play the remake. Shadowrun. A cult favorite, Shadowrun combines action mechanics, noir mystery, and a brooding cyberpunk world. You take control of one Jake Armitage who wakes up dead in a chop shop morgue. From here, you embark on a campaign to find out exactly who you are and why you were murdered. If you like cyberpunk aesthetics and SNES RPGs, go play this game. And now it's time to take out the trash. Dishonorable Mentions Mystic Quest. Okay, now let's just be civil. Mystic Quest is actually not that bad. It's basically baby's first JRPG. All of the game mechanics have been simplified, meaning veteran RPG players will breeze through it. If you are new to the SNES and new to RPGs, it's probably a good place to start, but that's about the only real in for the game. Eye of the Beholder. Now, Eye of the Beholder's original PC release is one of the best first-person dungeon crawlers ever made. The Sega CD release was not nearly as playable, but had great graphics and a killer original soundtrack by Yuzo Koshiro. The SNES version is pretty bad. It has its defenders, but truly, modifying mouse and keyboard controls to a SNES gamepad is yikes. Just play the PC version, it's abandonware, so you can play it easily for free. ActRaiser 2. ActRaiser 2 is exactly how you don't do a sequel. The first ActRaiser game is a critically acclaimed masterpiece while the follow-up eschews all of the strategy from the first game and is just a 2D side-scroller. It's an alright side-scroller, but the combination of strategy, RTS, action, and RPG mechanics from the first game made it one of the most unique titles on any system ever. This sequel is just disappointing. And now that the trash has been taken out, it's time for the main event. This is Digital Poutine's Top 10 Super Nintendo RPGs. Number 10. Star Ocean. We are starting off our list with the debut from a long-running sci-fi RPG series, the original Star Ocean. 
While never properly released in Western markets until the PSP remake many, many years later, Star Ocean was and is hailed as a cult favorite. When I heard about this game as a kid, I was convinced Nintendo was trying to create their own take on Fantasy Star. I was obviously a little bit off center, but I was a dumb kid, so cut me a little bit of slack, will ya? When I did finally get to play the game on the PSP, I was incredibly happy. The succeeding SO games all became overly dense with systems and mechanics, whereas this game was just a solid old school RPG. Number 9, Tales of Fantasia. Another debut for a beloved long-running series that was initially not released outside of Japan, Tales of Fantasia is our number 9. A solid and memorable RPG with fantastic characters, great combat and killer music, Tales of Fantasia was the start of the huge and sprawling Tales series. Combining real-time combat with more traditional RPG mechanics, T.O.P. was an excellent start to what would become a massive franchise. Number 8. Actraiser They do not make games like this anymore. At number 8 is the immense Actraiser. Combining elements of RPGs, city-building sims, and platforming action, Actraiser is a truly unique title. You take control of God in a battle against Satan. Yes, you heard that correctly, even though the Western translation is a little less than clear about this fact. Actraiser is a bizarre yet incredibly well done fusion of genres, and with a soundtrack by the amazing Yuzo Koshiro, you need to give this game a go. Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals Hot damn, our number 7 is the critically overlooked Lufia 2. The fact that this game is not as fondly remembered as Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy VI or The Secret of Mana is a true crime. Luthia 2 is an amazingly deep and satisfying RPG. The game contains many familiar tropes to 16-bit RPGs, such as an overhead map, turn-based battles, dungeons, and all of that good stuff, but you also have loads of dungeon-based puzzles like Zelda, capsule monsters that you can raise and level up to help you in combat, and visible monsters inside the dungeons. I have no idea how this amazing gem of a game is not more widely praised in the current day. I mean, it did receive a DS remake, but that game diverges greatly from the original game's combat and story, so skip that. Final Fantasy V Jobs, 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 jobs. Final Fantasy V is a great example of how a decent RPG can be made incredible with a single gameplay mechanic. While the story, gameplay, and trimmings of Final Fantasy V all make a perfectly acceptable JRP, it's the inclusion of a robust and complex job system that really amps up the game to top 10 material. While proceeding through the game, you acquire crystal shards that allow you to change into 22 different classes. Holy shit. This system was the debut of several long-lasting FF classes including Mime, Time Mage, Blue Mage, and others. FF5 was and is an absolute treat to play. Number 5. Super Mario RPG Brought to you as a joint project between Nintendo and Square, with Square doing the heavy lifting, Super Mario RPG takes the base of an old-school Square 16-bit RPG and builds Mario aesthetics on top of it. The game features Mario and a host of other SMB-related characters like Bowser and Peach, and also aesthetically matches the Mushroom Kingdom look. This title may have been a one-off, but it did go on to heavily influence the Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario series. But those games, while good, miss out on that unique square charm. One of my most highly wished for titles is a proper HD upgrade to this title, or heavens forbid, a full-on Kingdom Hearts style reboot, but obviously with Mario characters. Wishful dreaming, I know. Number 4, Earthbound! God damn, the Super Nintendo had some amazing RPGs on it. No list would be complete without 
Earthbound. Despite a heinous scratch and sniff the smelly monster butt ad campaign from back in the day, Earthbound flew under just about everyone's radar back in the 90s. But Earthbound, along with the entirety of the Mother franchise, has achieved an amazingly huge and loyal fan base in the current age. This love is not just found in these so-called casual fans, but also in modern day game designers. Modern day hits like Undertale and Lisa both owe their existence to the Mother series. If you want to play a bizarre and utterly charming old school JRPG, definitely get your hands on Earthbound and the other games in the series. Okay, before we get to the top three, I need to make one thing very clear. The top three, for me, it's all pretty interchangeable. I wrestled for ages on which one of these three is the best, second best, and third best, and I am mostly happy with this order. But given my mood, this could change at the drop of a hat. What I am trying to say is that all three of these games are near perfect, and I would be happy to be locked in a room with them for the rest of my life, along with Fantasy Star 4 for the Mega Drive. Number three, A Link to the Past. The Legend of Zelda was a landmark action adventure title. Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link added RPG elements. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, took these RPG elements away. Many people would argue that A Link to the Past isn't even an RPG, and I can see and almost agree with what they say, but the game and the series is definitely RPG adjacent, and A Link to the Past is, in my humble opinion, the greatest game in the series and the greatest action adventure RPG on the SNES, and probably anywhere else for that matter. This game looks incredible, sounds incredible, has incredible gameplay, has incredible puzzles, has incredible boss fights. A Link to the Past is an absolute masterpiece. Number two, Chrono Trigger. Taking the Silver is the one and only Chrono Trigger. Developed and published by Square with a designer dream team consisting of Hironobu Sakaguchi, Yuji Horii, Akira Toriyama, Masato Kato, and Yazanor Mitsuda, Chrono Trigger has received loads of well-deserved praise over the years and appears on many best video games of all time lists. Chrono Trigger doesn't just have fantasy elements, but also has sci-fi and time travel elements, creating a unique and intriguing take on the RPG formula. The game also completely eschews random battles, with all enemies being portrayed on the map directly. With an otherworldly story and gameplay that to this day is still fresh and exciting, Chrono Trigger deserves every ounce of praise it gets. Number 1, Final Fantasy VI. Although you may know it as Final Fantasy III. With so many Square RPGs on this list, you can tell that they were undefeated in a 16-bit era, and Final Fantasy VI is the crown jewel of this dynasty. This game is phenomenally huge, but it never feels like it's too long or too bloated. In an age before voice acting, this game was a perfect example of how expressive and emotive game sprites could be and that soundtrack further cements the emotions. Combat is turn-based but snappy and fast. The game also features a bevy of secrets that really reward you for going off the beaten path. Whether you want a deep story, deep combat, or a deep world, Final Fantasy VI is the absolute best RPG you can find on the SNES. And that is our list. Did you agree with our picks? Did you disagree? Did we miss anything? Leave a comment down below because I'd really like to hear your thoughts. If you liked this video, please like, share, subscribe, and rang -a, -lang a dang a that little bell. Don't forget to check us out at patreon.com forward slash digital poutine if you want to help us financially. And that is all for today. Thank you for your friendship. Tell your friends that you love them and never stop being nerdy.